Coming up this week on the Digital Lifestyle Show 786, Richard here, and we've got lots to talk about. We'll be catching up what's happened at CES from Windows' point of view. We've got Windows Insider News. We'll be reminiscing about Windows Vistas. I've been looking back at that. And we'll be looking forward at uh, devices we expect to see from Microsoft. So we've got a lot of stuff to get through, so let's get straight to Richard. Right, recording's going. So Richard, good evening. Good evening, Ian. How are you? Yeah, okay, good, thanks. Um, just... Uh, yeah, here we are once again in our virtual environment. Just before we were talking, we started there. You were saying how you were getting bored with virtual environments. Oh, I am. I'm virtual so technology. I'm so tired of virtual conferences and things now. I really am. I mean, obviously, you know, my day job involves writing about them as well. And I mean, everyone's trying really, really hard, but you get the feeling that there's, I mean, obviously, as a reporter, you do miss the in-person interaction. And I think to be honest, delegates miss that as well, because you can't really have the same Q&A sessions. I mean, I've, there's been a few not notable exceptions. I'd say, for example, the WSL Conf people, they did that really well, where you could have a Q&A, really. But on the whole, you're just not getting that. It's, it's, it's so many conferences now seem to be more a case of watching a succession of videos. Uh, I mean, it's yeah. quite fun when when you know the presenter is doing a live stream. That's actually quite fun because then it feels like it's more of a, you know, perhaps not interactive, but at least it's happening. Whereas when they're just doing a pre-recorded video, you think, well, this is no different to just sitting watching a video at home. It's just you know, it's it's not yeah. it's not the same at all. So yes, I'm I am I'm looking forward to hopefully this year maybe return of some in-person conference, although. I do worry that the genie is now out of the bottle as far as virtual is concerned and people are saying, well, it's quite cheap doing them this way, isn't it, really? Yeah, exactly. Because uh, what, what it's CES week, isn't it? And I've seen, um, I didn't sign up for it or anything. I mean, I guess I could have done, but I just, yeah, it's just a bit like you. I just don't have the same enthusiasm for an online, especially CES, which I always, the 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 show bits and the press announcements and the press releases and stuff were, were kind of the, the dull bits in in the interesting bits was walking around the show floor finding things that you didn't expect to find and talking to people that was the fun bit and that kind of takes it it makes it very dry doesn't it? exactly yes i mean i think certainly that is one issue that i don't think that any any vendors got around yet which is how you deal with the loss of the booth crawl where you would go around the booths because obviously sponsors it's their marketing opportunity as you say for attendees it's it's your chance to network and to see what's going on uh, which you just don't really get so and, and, and as you say even CES this year it's just been a slew of announcements but it's not really been the same context behind them yeah yeah that's it so um hopefully we'll get back to those it's funny isn't it when you I mean, the, the hard work CES was always good fun but it was hard work while you're there because you, you you know you end up walking for miles and miles and sat on floors and trying to find a plug socket and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> uh, I always found that the highlights with a with a with a wandering around and saying, Whoa, what's this? You know, as a stand that with were a booth with with something that you didn't expect to see. And then of course, you know, the evening was catching up with the other the other rap bloggers and, and enthusiasts and everything else. So all that was, was good fun. But yeah, yeah nice to get back to those. And quite frankly, I'm running out of t shirts. So, you know <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's true. Yeah, you used to get and get all this. I mean, what, how how are you managing for USB keys? <laughs> uh, well, actual fact, I kid you not, see, sitting in front of me, I've got a pile of about twenty because I've just been clearing out my shed where I work and I um and going through my storage because and I found yeah over twenty USB keys of various storage and some of them you, 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 I think oh I remember this one. This is one I picked up from here or there. Like I've got one here that um uh, I've picked up at the last thing that I ever went to, which was last February. I went to the um. Uh, Darmstadt in Germany for the European for, for the European Space Agency, and they were launching the um, the Solar Orbiter probe in Florida. And of course, I watched it from the Mission Control in Darmstadt, and they gave us these USB keys with information on the mission, but had a, a wonderful red "Remove Before Flight" style tag on it as well, which is great. And I think, oh, I remember that. That's the last time I actually went anywhere. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Well, hopefully. Hopefully things are on the on the way. We're doing well with the vaccines. Hopefully we can crack on with them. And uh, so yeah, as there. as Gary said, his his tech highlight was was you know, the 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 vaccine development, and I, and I have to uh, uh, echo his uh, his sentiments there wholeheartedly. Yeah, 
So, uh, as it was CES, is there anything that's caught your eye from CES? I must admit, I didn't see a huge amount. Uh, I, mean, there's, I mean, there's obviously the range of new laptops. Le Lenovo brought out yeah. some, some, some nice ones. I mean, again, it's it's kind of more, you know, spec bumps. Um, they're a bit thinner. They're, they're lighter. The batteries will go on for longer. Um, some of the foldable screens look good, but I think, again, that's, you know, we've seen one, seen the more real. It's, nothing's really got me terribly excited, if I'm honest. Um, but, you know, perhaps that's just IT fatigue. Yeah, I noticed. I mean, I went, read through some of the press releases to go on Microsoft's site. The um, Acer had some new sort of gaming, the Nitro Five. Oh I yeah, is that? Ago, it's, had a better bump. Anyway, I mean, uh, and is it Acer? Who's who's, who's done done the the Nintendo Switch like PC game 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 game, game machine? When basically it's a, it looks a bit like a Nintendo Switch. Was that Acer? I do apologise. Was it Asus? Um, ah. I don't know. It's not on the Acer post that I was reading, so it could be. You see, and the fact that I can't quite remember which it is indicates the marketing has not gone well. <laughs> yeah. Um, I yeah, I mean, the, the, the gaming gaming laptops always look okay, but uh, I, I, I quite like a gaming laptop. But, um, well, yes, I mean, I mean, there's been some new ones, I think, released on the uh, NVIDIA. Is it the GTX 30 stuff? So the, 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 yeah, the, the GTX 30 series. There's some fairly powerful gaming laptops that have never released, which obviously you'll, you'll want to, if, if, if you're playing some of the newer VR games uh, or, or VR stuff. Yeah, off they're your laptop. the RTX ones, aren't they? Yeah. Yes, they've got the ray tracing. I think there's a new RTX 3060 as well, I think, that for, for PCs. Yes. Yeah, so nice. <laughs> Luckily, my my rig that I'm running this on is is actually too physically too small to take a graphics card of that type in, which is handy for my bank account. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The um it's just a it's a never ending cycle with these. You always think oh, I've got the latest one and then there's always something else. Oh, yeah, I mean, I mean, I'll be honest. I've got a 1050 Ti in mine, which I think I've, I've had for years now. Which, which was just yeah. about enough to, it was just about enough to, to run the Oculus Rift. And it's, I have to say, it's still fine. It, it, it will cope with Flight Sim 2020. I have to say, I've not been able to make Flight Sim 2020's VR thing work particularly well off it. So maybe I need to string for an upgrade there. But otherwise, it's pretty good. Um, the games I play work okay. Like Sea of Thieves seems to work fine. So. I guess yeah. I'm always I'm always told that once you've seen a game running at 100 hertz, you'll say, "Oh, it, you know, how could I possibly have <laughs> yeah. run anything less?" But as yet, it seems fine. The 1060 in my um, in my gaming laptop that that does the job just quite nicely. For uh, I've been playing Horizon, Forza Horizon, and, and four, and um, yeah, it's great for that. It's a gig, you know, occasionally you you can outrun the. Um, the hardware so you're going down a road really quick and it hasn't had time to draw in the background and you're just in a, in a blank sea of nothing for where it catches up but i don't but apart from that every most of the time it's, it's absolutely fine you'll be unsurprised to know that, that, that my skill at forza horizon 4 means that never happens <laughs> yeah it's 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 not a high skill game but it, it is quite good fun and i have these modeled areas of the uk as well which is which is i do like you know so you can go around the lake district and you can recognize bits of it and edinburgh and that kind of thing and you think yeah. uh, you know they are noted they are recognizable streets as well which is quite fun how they've done that yes for sure i mean i did enjoy driving, driving around, around edinburgh you think, oh, i've been down here i was down here in 2019 oh, i was there in 2018 and yeah it's a, a yeah. bit of a nostalgia trip as well it's a it's the closest yeah. i've got to going out really although i will say with forza horizon 4 and sea of thieves actually the um the biggest boost i've managed to do to my pc hasn't been changing the graphics card it's been replacing the spinning disc with one of the very very cheap ssds you can get now yeah, that's actually a really good uh, good point. That, that I think that's so, that, so that's probably on my for my laptop, which has got the dual drives. I think that's my next job. Yeah, I would say definitely. It's you know, it's it's. I mean, it's it's one of the things that just transforms the, the performance. And I, you know, I mean, I, I mean, I had a I've got a very very old uh, Asus laptop, which, which is an i7, but it's one of the very first i7s. It must, must be wow. It's got to be. I don't know, eight years old now, perhaps even older. And um, I thought I switched out the the um, the spinning disk for, for an SSD. And it, I can't justify replacing it because it's it's so fast at the moment. It's incredibly quick. It's got obviously as much as much RAM as, as, as I can fit in it, 16 gigs, and it absolutely flies. It just, it just chews through Windows 10, you know, for, for breakfast. It chews mm. through through Office apps and things. Only problem is the battery is long dead, so you got to you, you can run it off the mains for about three minutes before it dies. 
But apart from that, it's great. Um, and it's interesting, actually, that, that that machine will happily upgrade to Windows 10. Whereas I've also yeah. got, I also pulled out of storage uh, my old Mac Mini, which is a late 2012 version, also with an i7, 16 gigs of RAM and an SSD. And that is now obsolete as far as Apple's concerned. It won't take the new version of uh, Mac OS. It'll just go as far as Catalina and that's it. So right. uh, I, I do find it interesting that, that, that you can still get on perhaps older hardware, Windows working fine, whereas Apple does tend to, I mean, obviously, you know, yeah, they do control the hardware ecosystem, but they do tend to obsolete things, even when the kit is still working absolutely fine, which I was actually thinking to myself, I promise I'll just boot camp this and just make it run Windows 10 instead. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, talking of upgrades as well, um, Tom Dixon, no relation, um, he listened to our show and he was talking, we were talking about monitors. So he's gone for a, a 49 inch Philips curved monitor uh, it's for about a thousand dollars, I think it was. I think it was in dollars, and he's got it. It's a USB C, and um, he's got. He's actually sent me a picture, so I'll uh, I'll share my screen. You can see the uh, picture that I've got on there. Um, there we go. So there's his. Uh, so there's Ooh, his, his like... screen that he's got. Yeah, that's a proper screen, that isn't it? Well, it's a proper screen with a proper background as well. He looks like looks like Tom's working in a very nice part of the world there. That looks very nice. Yeah, I was going to say that looks very doesn't look like that outside of my uh, patio at the moment. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, it looks great. It's a, yeah, but but I have to say those those wide screens are great. He's got yeah, a nice nice big wide uh, thing there. And also yeah, different displays. Which uh, I must say, I am very tempted to get a. a a big wide monitor, I have to say. It's it, it is on it is on my shopping list now. I'm just not sure my 1050 can cope with playing games on it, really. Yeah, and um, and it thou I think it was a thousand pounds or so as well. It's quite uh, expensive. Um, but yes, uh, yes. I mean, I'm, I mean, it is compared to buying, say, two big screens, but all the same, it's still great though. Yeah, I mean, if you look at the the, the other shot that I've got on there the, with the curve around there, I think it does look pretty cool on that. Um, but again, again, he's he's also winning the 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 best the best uh, uh, chair game as well. I have to say, it's a you know That's nice, comfy looking chair there. Good. It is. And Tom said uh, he got locked down wallet itch, so he got uh, Project Cars two, um, flight sim, and a wheel because of us. So he's blaming <laughs> us for that. <laughs> I think he should be thanking us for that. That's a superb use. Yeah. A superb use of you you use of both funds and time. Yeah, I think that screen will pr look pretty good on Project Cards 2 with and Flight Sim, actually. I bet it would, yeah. Oh, uh, well. Yeah, so. Well, nice one, Tom. Well, thanks, 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 Tom. Thanks for that. <laughs> <laughs> um, just, so, I've, I've, I've got both location and PC envy going on now. Yeah, yeah. So I still haven't ordered my, um, my a screen yet. I'm still debating over what, what screen to get. So I don't want one that's going to take up too much space, but. Uh, um, I'm finding the, the limits with the one I've got now. Yeah, I'm I'm trying to restrain I'm, I'm trying to restrain myself from buying any more gadgets until I finish doing the house. When the house is finished, then the gadget gates will be opened. <laughs> Excellent. That seems it seems a good idea. Uh, I, I was a bit, I, I nearly bought a gaming PC over Christmas, and I thought I thought well we'll see how much gaming I do when I get back to work, and so so no, I'm changing my mind on that one. I think <laughs> I think what I'll hold out now for is a new surface laptop with a bigger drive in there so that i can uh, do some more virtual machines i think that's probably be more useful for me yes indeed well of course there has been some some surface tweaks haven't there in, in, um, in the last week yeah um so there's a surface pro 7 plus there is although it believe it's business only or business education only so, so it's, it's not for mere mortals and it's a yeah it's an interesting device so it's I mean, obviously, I didn't think we had a Surface upgrade last year, did we? There was no, there was no bumps last year for the Surface Pros. Pros, no. I don't think so. I think this year we're expecting there to be a Surface Pro Eight at some point, but uh, this seems yeah. to be a, a kind of you know make weight where they 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 basically shoehorned in the um, you know faster processor, the the eleventh gen Intel uh, core processors. Um, they've also lifted, I believe, the, the slimmer screen from the um, from the Pro X. Although you wouldn't know to look at it, it's got the same bezels around it, but it's made more space inside the case, I think, for a larger battery. It's got the biggest battery I think the Surface Pro has yeah. ever had, which they claim we can go up to 15 hours, although 
uh, I think you should probably take that figure with a pinch of salt because obviously it depends on what you're doing with that 15, <laughs> those 15 hours. Yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, it's it's it is a useful spec, but the rest of ports are, are, are unchanged. You've got USB A, USB C. You've got um, you've also got a memory card slot, unless you've gone for the LTE version, because there's, there's now an, an, an LTE version in there, which will give you basically jumped yeah. up 4G, I think, with a Qualcomm modem, uh, and that will take either a nano SIM or you can run an eSIM, which is good news for corporate people uh, who you know, may want to roll things out. The other really big thing in it is the SSD can be swapped over as well. Which yeah. uh, I mean, I think uh, obviously in you know, in your day job, that's the sort of thing. If you're supporting, an, uh, you know, if if you if you're not a team and just supporting a, a fleet, that's actually fantastic news because it means you can, you know, it's much easier to deal with data stored on these things in a secure fashion. So that I think is great. Why I came away thinking about it? What, what occurred to me looking at it was this is all great. It's a real shame consumers can't buy it. I mean, it's, it starts about nine hundred nine pounds, and then it's as much as you want to spend. Because I think it, it, it would also, and this this would this would this would have made Jason happy. Can also go up to I think thirty two gigs of RAM now, can't yeah. it as well? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. But it did occur to me as I was looking. I thought, why would why would you buy a Surface Pro X now? Because you've got the same battery life in theory, slightly thicker case. But it will probably go faster, be more compatible. You've got the LTE stuff, so it almost felt like they were whittling away at the, some of the setting features of the Pro yeah. X, which uh, you know, it, it, I mean, that, that obviously had a speed bump with the SQ2 chip last year. But it's still an ARM-based device, and there's no getting no getting away from the fact that, that Microsoft Microsoft support for ARM-based devices has not been stellar. You can't escape that. That fact, you know, it's it's improving, but it's there's there's, there's a long way to, there's a, there's a long way to go. And of course, there's a rich irony that Apple devices may well spur more ARM-based um, versions of applications for the uh, for the Windows ARM-based devices. But yeah, I mean, I, I looked, at it, I thought, crikey, if, if I could buy this as, as a consumer, I would think very hard about if I really needed Pro X. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, that was the other. The, it was more last year. I had that ten. I was in fact. I think I, I did pre-order the the Pro X and then I cancelled it. I think you put me off really. Um, <laughs> oh, sorry about which that. Which is probably probably the right thing as well because if I had the Pro X, I certainly wouldn't be using it for the same Hyper-V stuff that I'm using. Um, so yeah, so it, it, I wouldn't be getting the same use out of it. So I, I was right to stick with the with the laptop. But I think um, given the choice now with the, between the two, there's oh, it's more of, of a, a physical. I don't know. It's it's more of an ideology, isn't it, than than a than a an actual technology choice, isn't it? That you you want to go down the ARM based route, and I think perhaps it's just for people that are still wanting to push the limits with ARM based stuff at the moment, and maybe you know over time we'll we'll see better support and we'll see more devices get ARM. But uh, yeah, certainly it, for an enterprise, obviously this is. You know, this is a, a pretty good device. Although, still, the, the Surface Pros, my experience is, when they're, they're fine for the, the odd request, but if you've got to roll out a, a lot of devices, the premium that you pay actually makes it hard to justify rolling out, you know, a massive a mass rollout of Surface Pro devices when you can get a decent Dell business laptop for two three hundred pounds cheaper. Yeah. Well, absolutely, yes. And, and then, then when you start to multiply by 100, 200, it makes a big difference. Yeah, of course. And of course, uh, yeah, it's worth pointing out that that price I quoted there does not include the keyboard, which which you're going to have to have. So, of course, yeah. You know, so you, you, yeah. You're, well, you're, you're well over 1,000 already, and, 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 and that's just for the i3 128 gig version. So it is, it's still a prestige thing. But, of course, the Surface Pro, it's always been about Microsoft's flagship. It's it's their way of showing off, you know, here's how we think you should should build stuff. So um, I do understand that to a certain extent. But, yeah, it's, yeah, it is still pricey. But, yeah, I mean, I think with certainly the Pro X and Windows and ARM, I think Microsoft really needs to go all in with it. You know, much like Apple's gone all in with Apple, with Apple Silicon. Yeah. Because at the moment, this feels like, man, eh, little tweaks here and there. But I'm, I'm not sure how committed they are to this as a platform and, and the arrival of the 7 plus the pro 7 plus i think well that's kind of undermined the justification for the pro x a little bit more so hopefully there'll be some exciting things coming down down the pipe in the coming months yeah and we've not seen anything that from at cs from any arm based windows devices have we? no there yeah yeah i mean I've, nothing's leapt out at me i mean there's been a few i, I believe there's been a few sort of uh, uh, tweaks from the usual suspects but there's been no no loud noises being made about Windows and ARM at all. Um, so yeah, we haven't got an Acer or a Dell or one of those big players. Yeah. So you, 
you know, you you, you do wonder, um, you know, if if the moment is is now passing when when that could have made an impact. Um, don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah. But I, but at the at the moment, certainly the 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 you know the Surface Pro Seven X with that battery life is just you think well, it's the same battery life as a Pro X. So it, yeah, it's it's a very strange thing to do. Be, be interested to see now what happens with the, a Pro Eight. Will we get a Pro Eight? Uh, uh, or is this just yeah. The Pro I mean, Eight out? I mean, I think there definitely will be a Pro 8 because otherwise I think they, they would have called this the, the, the Pro 8. So I think there'll definitely be a Pro yeah. 8. I would expect it to arrive probably in the autumn, but I've been wrong before. Um, and I think we might see some changes. I mean, we, we might see perhaps a, more, a slimmer device that, that's more like the, the, the Pro X because one thing yeah. the Pro X has got is it's very slim. It's a, you know, it, 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 it perhaps almost flimsy, but it's certainly much thinner than the hewn from granite of the Pro 7. Um, so we might see that. Uh, and you know, I'm, I'm. I think if Microsoft is serious about ARM, we need to see something along the lines of a laptop, you know, Surface Laptop Go or, or so, 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 Surface Go, or whatever, that's ARM based yeah. as well. Yeah, I think so. And I think for me, I've been waiting now to see whether my next machine would be. I, I real this laptop too. I've got is that is fantastic. And so I think I would look at that just with a bigger hard drive in it. <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, I mean, I almost ordered a laptop three today, actually, because uh, um, thanks to the joy of homeschooling, uh, my my workhorse Dell XPS 13, which I bought back in 2016, sadly had a, a coming together with the ground, and uh, oh, dear. <laughs> yes, and and that, uh, and and that there was much much wailing and gnashing of teeth, um, but <laughs> hence hence the old Asus was was brought back into service once more to mm. uh, to, to fill the gap, but. Um, I did think, oh crikey, this is probably it. Though I'm going to have to buy a new one because it's you know it's well out of warranty. And uh, but yes, I called up Dell and, and they're going to send the guy around to fix it on Thursday. So that was, that was quite quite surprising. I'll let you know how it goes next week if it worked or not. Yeah. But certainly the cost yeah. of getting it fixed was was way 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 less than buying you know, a new one. So um, I figured I'd just yeah. hope we fix it and get a few more years life out of it. Yeah, maybe hang on for a Surface Laptop 4. Well, yeah, I mean, as, I mean, as, as, as you said earlier, one of the real killers, I think, with, with modern hardware, particularly once you've got an SSD and lots of RAM, is, you know, it's it will keep on running for a long time. It's perhaps one of the reasons why the PC market and even the, you know, the iPad market until recently had stalled because um, these things are good enough to keep running things. But obviously, yeah. the PC market has enjoyed somewhat of a resurgence in the last year due to... What we'll call one thing and another. Um, lots yeah. of working from home yeah. suddenly being needed. So that's you know, giving the PC mark a bit of a shot, shot in the arm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm going to hold out now and see and see what see what the, the summer brings for devices. <laughs> and maybe I'll be start starting to look for for devices that have long battery life again because you, because you're out on the road. Because at the moment, battery life is not the critical factor. <laughs> Not really, no, no. As you say, it's, it really isn't. And I think, I think by 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 then, obviously, unless you go for one of those Nvidia gaming laptops, uh, I suspect battery life will be. I mean, yeah, you know, it seems like 10, 10, 10 hours plus is becoming more of a norm now. So perhaps yeah. it's on the increase. Yeah, maybe we'll see. Um, yeah, we'll we'll keep an eye on the on the uh, CES coverage as well and see if there's anything that pops out we can talk about because I think it actually just start more or less starts today or yesterday. Yeah, it kicked off yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I we're looking forward to uh, to getting back. I'm not sure I get to go bother going back to CES for a while, but even so, it'd be nice to have something that we, we can talk <laughs> about. Um, okay. What else? Oh yeah, talking about. Uh, being modern and the latest things. Did you see that I uh, got my Windows Vista installer out this last week? I did see that. Congratulations. <laughs> um, so I thought I've not put myself through enough pain recently. Um, <laughs> it, so it wasn't thought, that bad. It wasn't that bad. <laughs> yeah. So what I did, um, what I did last week was I thought, well, I'll see. Really, it was was Vista as bad as? Um, was Vista as bad as we thought at the time, or as people thought at the time? And um, so I got my uh, my Surface laptop out, and uh, we, using the guide that I created um, last year on how to install old operating systems, which Vista is now an old operating system. It is um, I installed um, Vista and uh, really went back and had a look to see if it really was as bad 
as uh, as we thought at the time. And of course, the first thing I came across was the old, when I saw there in the start menu was Windows Media Center, and that really <laughs> made me nostalgic for for, oh, yeah. for that time. Um, what was it been 2007? So that was not quite the peak of PC sales. I see, I saw a chart today. I know PC sales, like you said, were up, but I think they peaked around 2011, something like that. Yeah. But yeah, this was 2007. And I think you know, the conclusion, I think probably from memory of living through it and of course, and then trying it again recently, is really, it wasn't as bad as as it probably got the press for the time but i think m- there was a lot of justification for some for the, pe- the pain that it caused and it was all really down to hardware that seems to be the that seems to be one of the main issues either big drivers or um ram and do you, do you remember i remember pc world selling I, I don't know what spec processor they had but they certainly had this to compatible pcs with 512 absolutely yeah and and, and you've you've you know, that i mean that is it in a nutshell that was a problem with with, with with this i think was that people bought machines that had that dreaded dreadful sticker saying you know vista compliant or vista compatible on them thought oh it'll be fine and it was a terrible experience and vista yeah if you didn't have the hardware and if you were saying we're coming from a machine that could just about run xp you try and put Vista on it and everything would stop working because it would be so slow. The video wouldn't work properly. Uh, the drivers, because obviously Microsoft changed to a whole new driver model there as well. The drivers, you know, the devices would stop working. It was a terrible experience, but and I think you're absolutely right. If you had the hardware, then Vista, I would say, was as quick and snappy, I found it, as Windows 7, Darren. Dare I say it? Because it was yeah. everything just worked. It was, I mean, I mean, you know, I was lucky in in that I, in, in that I had a machine with a, a lot of memory, and Vista was fine. Yeah, I, I had no real issues with it at all. But equally, um, uh, I did a lot of friends and family support where people had a lot of problems with Vista. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I think I think that's it exactly. I think the memory was, and we were talking. You were talking about spinning hard drives as well. And of course, what happens when all memory is used? It uses the spinning hard drive as the yeah. paging file, and that's a terrible experience. And I think um, exactly. That, and it, and it, as you say, that that sticker on boxes saying it's Vista compatible. Of course, it, what it meant was it would barely work. You know, you couldn't even do the you know, the, 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 the 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 air effects and things. It was really mm. really basic. I think you're absolutely right. That was like that was the killer for Vista. Yeah, and of course, when you're running it in Hyper-V with, give it a couple of gig of RAM and a nice fast hard drive, even through the Hyper-V, it, it runs perfectly fine and nice and smooth. And so I didn't have any experience in it because, of the, you know, the basic drivers and everything worked. And yeah. Um, But yeah, and it's interesting, some of the things that were um, problematic at the time, like the user account control, the, we've kind of got used to that now, haven't we? And um well, exactly. I mean, that, that that made sense. It's a thing saying, "Are you sure you, you know you 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 actually did to, to, to do a thing that could cause you you harm? Are you sure?" So I guess maybe it was a bit too into in your face, maybe a bit too paranoid, perhaps. But as you say, everyone's got used to it. You know, you get it on Macs, you get it on you know Windows 10, everywhere. It's it's, it's a standard thing where yeah. you do a stupid thing. The OS says, "Are you sure you want to do this stupid thing? Are you sure?" Yeah. <laughs> but I guess in, uh, in, in 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 XP, you could do what you like. So <laughs> yeah, you could just do what you want. Yeah. And I, and I found some interesting bits and pieces as well, like uh, Windows Sideshow. I'd completely forgotten about that. I, um, I remember seeing that because I went to CES for the launch of Vista uh, with Microsoft. Um, and that's where I met Bill Gates, actually, at that, uh, that key and went to the key, press, the uh, keynote as well. That was that was pretty funny experience. But yeah, the, uh, they demonstrated that Sideshow. That, that was the sound of a name being dropped there, in case you're wondering. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's, it's because I want the uh, the vaccine, you know, so <laughs> <laughs> it would be controlled by Bill also the vaccine. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, that that side, do you remember that? That so that was like a, a second display built into the lid of a laptop or a desktop. Yeah, it was. Yeah, which I would again. I think was a good idea, and and and, and I wish to do it with phones now. Yeah, I don't think apart from when Microsoft demoed them at some of the press events and the, one of the events I went to. I actually can't remember ever seeing a device with it on. I've got a vague memory Toshiba did one, but again, we're talking, yeah. this is a long time ago now. But I've, I've, yeah. do, do you reckon that, that if they stick stick one on, on the Duo, they'll call it the Vista screen? <laughs> oh, that wouldn't that be great now? I think, I think Microsoft <laughs> needs to embrace that, yeah. But, um, 
yeah, and, and I suppose it made sense at the time because PCs were, um, were, were were still you know slow to boot up and that kind of thing. So if you had a little second display that said how many unread emails you've got and things like that, um, I don't know. I, I think there's still you think with some e ink there would be some kind of room for that nowadays. Well, but no, it seems to be really yeah. Good. I mean exactly. I mean with things like connected with things like connected standby and stuff, that seems to be what they're they're, they're moving towards. The only problem is they they've done away with that ability to have to have that second screen which is kind of what you need to make the likes of connected standby really work well for laptops you know that that, that very yeah. simple you know e-ink screen to say here's what's happening in your pc while you're not looking at it that'd be great yeah yeah there's lots of fun things in vista so anyway you can check out the video um i'd recommend it. It, is, it is it is a nostalgia trip for sure it is yeah it's funny isn't it we're doing this retro stuff now and you know it, i was uh, well, we were all there at the launch. It's really weird, isn't it? <laughs> that's, yeah. That's I, mean, things... I mean, Windows 8 might be a bit less good to go through, if I'm honest, because uh, I always find it amazing that the, 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 the Microsoft went from Vista, they went to Windows 7, which is basically Vista tidied up and earned back all the, all, all the kudos again. And then they just put out Windows 8. And I, even even now, I can remember the horror when, when, when I got the first, the first beta of it. And I looked and thought, they can't be serious what they're going to do with this. They can't be serious with this. And yeah. And then it came out and it was just horrifying. <laughs> well, that is on my list. I, I will do that because I think that I want to see. Yeah, I think uh, maybe I'll look at seven next and then we'll look yeah. at that. Although that's that said, I mean, that's said, Win Windows 8 made perfect sense on the surface. It, 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 it Brilliant there. But going from Windows 7 on a desktop to Windows 8 on a desktop, I just thought they've lost their minds. They've lost their minds. Yeah. And, and I think and I think, and I think almost every release since then has kind of been just trying to row back in as most, in as face-saving fashion as they possibly can. Yeah. Uh, the um, One of the things that I did find interesting on, on Vista, of course, was the gadgets. Yeah, they were cool, weren't they? The screen thing. Yeah, and I, and I kind of do wonder whether um, that was something that could come back because we've all got these massive widescreen monitors now. Um, are you? Are you to, oh, I'm going to bring it back in a way. Are you about to launch into build two one two eight six here? Just, just curious. Yes. Can um, yeah. <laughs> we we'll see those gears changing? Yes. Yeah, this is the insider build. This is the uh, news and interests in the taskbar thing, which, uh, yeah, as you say, now with now with massive screens, let's fill it with with some news and interests. So it's, uh, yeah. So a new build came out last week uh, for the dev channel, and there's three. I'd say there's three interesting things in it. Um, obviously, the the one that catches the eye is the news and interest. But basically, it's going to show you a little widget on the taskbar itself. You click on that, up comes uh, a feed containing stuff like news, and weather, and other things that you want to see, which you can customize and make it your own, or you can kill it, or you or, or you can kill the thing off completely as well, which I think which I think is what I did because it, it you know, my taskbar <laughs> is already very crowded. I don't need to have that stuff in my taskbar. Thank you very much. I'm, if I want it, I'll go to it. I don't need it popping up. You know, I always find it bizarre. Um, we have things like weather apps and things on taskbar. I think well, I can look at that window, and I know exactly how how sunny it is or cloudy it is. The windows <laughs> just there. It's easy. It's called Windows. It's also called a window. So, 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 yeah, so that's interesting. And, and I think that gave us a little hint into a, well, a little insight into what perhaps the next version of Windows, this you know, UI refresh might look like. Because it had, you know, quite soothing, fluent design type things, nice rounded yeah, corners. Rounded. Everyone's, yeah. everyone's getting on rounded corners, aren't they? Yeah, rounded corners and yeah. all look very lovely. So that perhaps was a, an insight into what might be coming down the pipe. Of course, we've got to say dev channel stuff, no promise it will ever see the light of day in, in, in the release of Windows, but seems True this would seem to be relatively straightforward to implement. And also, yeah. unusually, uh, it was it came out for a whole bunch of countries. So it wasn't just US only. It was US, UK, I think some European countries. Yeah, you know, it came out in, in lots of places. And I think for all insiders, I could be wrong there. I think it's all yeah, insiders. Yeah, well, products. I think they said it's rolling out. Cause I've seen some people on Twitter saying, I haven't got it. And actually, my VM doesn't have it, but my Surface... Um, Surface Go does so. Okay. I think they're rolling out in phases. I mean, I know the but, other, uh, the other, the, yeah, more of it, but it's going to come to. I think it's going to. Go, I think the, the, there's no A/B testing happening here, which they are no. doing with uh, the tweaks they've done around uh, the storage spaces settings, which I think they are being A/B tested, I believe. Yeah, um, I didn't get that. Yeah, which which I've got that, but I know some people haven't got it. But I think the the other, I was going to say the other important thing in this uh, preview as well as of course, it means all insiders are now shunted onto the uh, RS pre-release 
branch. So, yes. so everyone's going to be on that from from installing this. You're on that. You can't go back. You're going to you're going to get the same build going 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 forwards if you're in the dev channel. So that's a a marked change there. So maybe it's a sign that we're going to start seeing more of perhaps uh, what might be 21H1 if such a thing exists yeah. in the other channels perhaps. You know, not quite yeah, sure. Maybe. Um, the the other thing that that again purely from a niche nerdy uh, stamp standpoint. Um, as as well as the file system command line disk usage function uh, stuff, which is again quite handy, uh, was uh, the ability to run commands on startup in the Windows subsystem for Linux, which I think if you're developing that, that's really useful to be, to be able to have it start up with a specific command, makes life much easier. Uh, yeah, so that's, that's something which I've begun to use already. Um, but aside from that, I mean, I think that's pretty much it just a bunch of fixes i think and and uh and some known issues of which there's a lot of known issues with that news and interesting which is uh unfortunate it's, a, it's an interesting thing that they, they've chose to do that i mean there's maybe it's a quick it, it's a quick win and i wonder whether it's more of testing of the uh, of the um what's the, the engine that's the, it's the it's the using the chrome browser engine underneath isn't it oh yes of course i should point out you have to have edge yeah, uh, chromium edge installed to make, to make this yeah. work as well which i think you is hard to avoid now uh, it is yeah uh, so, so, you, so you have to have that yes yeah so it, it could be a, a test of how that of, of how they're doing things i think it'll be interesting to see if, if that turns up suddenly in maybe ordinary windows because They've been able to change other things like like, like like the search experience at the server side, not the client side. So I don't know how much this stuff actually, actually is, is now being done from from or can can be tweaked from the yeah. server side. It's WebView 2, the name I was trying to think of. Yeah. All right. It's, it's Willie Gary. Well, see, Gary would, yeah. Gary would have gone. He, 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 he would have done that would have immediately. Done that. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I wonder how much of this, because I, mean, I can't imagine anybody's ever said, oh, I really wish we had a news and weather pop up in the taskbar <laughs> no one's ever really asked for that but i can't help thinking that this oh, is really a good, a, a I mean, good way of i should say testing. they've kept they've kept doing it i mean they, 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 they had that news ticker for a while um as you say with in, in vista they're, they're the widgets and things they've had the activists the, the activex or the active desktop of windows 98 so they've had <laughs> they, they keep trying it so maybe this time it will stick who knows <laughs> i must admit yeah. i mean and, and of course each time you go on the start menu you know you get flung you know things appear uh each time you open, you open up you know um, uh, edge things appear so it just seems to be one more place to put stuff hopefully i was pleased to see no adverts in it or no sponsored areas in it yet yes. which, which which made me happy yeah but i i, I wonder whether this will be a model for the delivery of the content especially once you get a simplified start menu like windows 10x you've got a you know where you don't have the live titles with the weather and the news on Absolutely. I mean, I'm, I'm hopefully it'll be a sign that we're going to start seeing some more visual changes to to Windows 10. Because certainly, it's been a long time since we've had anything particularly exciting in it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we also did get another um, update this evening, as we record on Tuesday evening, for Windows Insiders on the beta and release preview channels. Uh, yeah, I presume this is is this mainly the um, the cumulative update. Yeah, it is. Yeah, so this is um, takes you to one nine zero four two dot seven four six. Just a couple of security updates in there, so not a huge amount of changes, but it's, yeah. Um, but hopefully, Tuesday. I mean, hopefully, we're going to start seeing some stuff in the beta that Excellent. that will be twenty one H one. Surely, yeah. I think hopefully, yeah. I think that's because at the moment the beta and release preview are, are running the same thing, um, so it would be nice to shift that one wouldn't it so the beta is the well, exactly. thing, at least previews the current thing with the fixes and so exactly yeah. seeing as, as as we've now moved you know to the uh, to a new ch channel for for the dev channel people then I, I, I would hope there'd be a you know what what was there will, will crop up in in the beta uh, channel as for 21h1 but but we'll see uh, again we're not expecting much out of that already it's, it's just i think it's likely to be just a, a jumped up patch yeah, absolutely, it is. Yeah, um, so that's that's been it for the Windows Insider news. It's, it's been good to have a new build, though. It was good to hmm. to have that last week. Um, I, I prefer 2007 era testing at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I need to get to DOSBox, and then I can get um, Windows 95 and 
do some of those. I, I never got those to work with uh, with Hyper-V. None of the 16-bit operating systems would work on Hyper-V that, that I've got to work anyway. Yeah, you'd pro pro probably need DOSBox or something like that. Yeah, I think, well, as people know, if anyone's seen my videos from last year, I did go far back as NT351, so... Uh, you can you can go from NT351 to Windows 10 with a bit of bit of work. I, I still maintain NT3555 on was the pinnacle. NT4 may be the pinnacle. Well, I'd say I those two. NT4 pinnacle. Well, I mean, NT4 got the Windows 995 shell, obviously, although I kind of prefer the purity of the NT351 program manager. But then yeah. I am very, very old. So. <laughs> I, I, there is something still that's about. I did see someone post it on Twitter. I, I think it was the hot dog color theme. Do you remember the hot dog color theme for Windows? I do remember yeah. that. That was horrendous. Yeah, who could run <laughs> that? I remember that yeah. very well. That was that was oh dear, that was disastrous. That was. <laughs> yeah, in fact, that was the thing with with Windows three one. As far as customization, you could you could choose your own backdrop, but it wasn't really great, was it? You couldn't have like you you've not got like these great four K images that you used to have. I think yeah. It was, Probably 16k color, you know, maybe maybe 256 if you were lucky, and then you could choose between like seven primary colors. It was a bit like the spectrum for the no. color, the color choices. And I see no problem with that at all. Choice is bad. Too much choice is bad. We should have less choice. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, I, I don't know that any IT workers will probably know, but you know, the bane of life of anybody remote controlling people of machines is when they have some stupid backdrop on there that takes all yes. the bandwidth as it's trying to render that to your remote control software. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Or, yeah. or, or, or worse still, you find their color, their color depth is, is, is epic and yours is not quite so, so good. And you can't work out what's on the screen because it's all, it's all, it's it. Your system is, is having problems rendering it down to 16 colors from, from the 16 yeah, bit and color. This, and this is one of the justifications actually for me getting an extra big monitor when I'm working from home is because if you're remote controlling somebody's machine who's got a better monitor than you have, and uh, then it, you, you're scrolling around all over the place. And there's a corporate justification right there. Yeah, yep. yeah there so, we go. You say, boss, think how much time I can save if I had Tom Dixon's 44 inch Philips monitor. That's what I need, you see that? And <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to send him Tom's pictures. <laughs> uh, right, what else do we have to finish? Oh, just a couple of things. Um, there was a couple of updates for Surface Duo, which I had this week, uh, but it's just around the launch and not the operating system. Um, I don't know what we talked since I've got Sam, I've got Android 11 running on the Note and that's gone out. To, I think most of the uh, I think the S20s and S20 FE have all got that um, Android 11 now. It's a little bit different, but not a huge amount. Quite a yep. subtle change, really. I don't think it's come to my S10 yet, although I'm not sure if my S10 is going to get it. No, I'm not sure. Um, I can't remember. I think the S10. Yeah, last year's model, that isn't it? Yeah, well, no, actually, year before. Year before. Remember, yeah. last year was 2020, the year we don't talk about. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> you just skipped it. You said, yeah. yeah, last year, 2019. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's right. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, maybe enough. I quite got used to it now, but it's not a huge amount of changes. I think we did talk about this one like, because I, I remember saying, um, do you, I remember, got, you know, we went from Android Cupcake to Donut, I think it was, because you know, they oh. were all named after uh, sweets, weren't they, in Android? And, desserts, and, ginger, yeah. and gingerbread and things. I think they still are, aren't they? Yeah. yeah, I think so. But at the time, when you went from donut to gingerbread or cupcake to eclair, that was one of the ones. There was a massive amount of changes, weren't there? Because, you know, it was on that trajectory of, of rapid changes. To, and, and, and then, of course, everything just levels out as as systems get more uh, mature. Yeah, and oh, I should point 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 about as well. To be fair, because I think I had a bit bit bit, bit of a whinge about about my uh, my Apple Mac and it's uh, it's it's and it, it going obviously after a mere sort of seven years years or so, obviously uh, with my Android phone, I fully expect that 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 to get no, no more uh, uh, um, updates within the next few months, really. Yeah, I think, and that's where I think Samsung now do three years, don't they? Have security update. Microsoft have committed to that as well, they, for the Duo, but I yeah. think. It hasn't always been the case. In fact, I remember ooh, more nostalgia. But remember the, the G1? Yeah, yeah. The, the, uh, I think that didn't get donut. <laughs> I just showed you. I'm sure some people with, with Android fans will be able to correct me. But yeah. I remember having that and, and think, oh, I really want to get the next. Maybe an Eclair, but uh, yeah. I didn't get it. And I mean, and, and frankly, you know, it, yeah, that's. 
as as flagship phones have have increased in price, that's just really not good enough. You know, you, you know, you can't spank that much amount of money on a phone, and it effectively be, be declared obsolete and never going to be updated again after three years. That's just that, that means you you've burnt through yeah. what 300, 400 pounds a year, and 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 the phone is is now dead. Whereas uh, at least say iPhones. I mean, I think Apple's only recently pulled support for the very very old 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 iPhones. So um, uh, I think that's a an ongoing issue, I think, with uh, with certainly the Android ecosystem, that that, that, that some, sometimes the updates don't flow through as fast yeah. as they should, if at all. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I should have wait. The, I should have wait the angry emails about that one. <laughs> yeah, um, my wife has got the, that iPhone SE I got for Christmas. And I absolutely loves it. So, uh, sure, you, you, you don't have to spend a huge amount, um, you know, with an iPhone. But if you're a, a, already a happy iPhone user, then uh, as she was with a six, then I think she'd be quite happy with that and long battery life, a good camera, and she's, you know, you don't have to spend for, for the, the the whole extra amount for an iPhone 11 or whatever. But uh, she actually yeah, be happy with her with her device. Excellent. I can't see why you would possibly want one as big as the Duo, or even the Note. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to say it's uh, yeah. There, there is a you know, uh, there is a certain level. There is a certain level of sense that I mean, I mean, yeah. Mrs. Speed has got a um. Uh, she has a uh, an SE as well, which she's very very happy with. Uh, so yeah. I look at my at my tennis and think, yeah, that's probably not the right device actually. But I mean, maybe one day we'll get proper facial recognition working with with Marson. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Um, okay, so I so I think that was really all the uh, items that I had on for the show for this week. Uh, did you have anything else? No, that's it for me. Yeah, I don't think there was any breaking news as we were as we recorded tonight. I mean, I mean aside from clearing my my, show, I also found my my iPod. I've got a thirty gig. <laughs> I've got a thirty gig iPod, which which I hadn't turned on for about I don't know ten years. Started first time. Very good. Hold well, the charge. I'll find my Zoom up. Uh, yeah, you should actually you should do. Yeah, you should do the, the, the Zoom was was a nice bit of hardware as well. I mean, yeah, must be, must be with this iPod here. I did look at the Zooms and think, think, oh, the Zooms look good too. But I I bought the iPod, and uh, yeah, it still works. I'm sure the Zoom would still work as well. The disc, I'm but, sure it would. But you can feel the disc spinning in your hand when it's doing its stuff. It's really oh quite, yeah, because it's, it's quite the disc one. Yeah, exactly. It's quite a strange sensation. So it's a crack. It feels weird. And have you looked back and seen how much how much your musical t- uh, taste has changed over this time? I'm embarrassed to say, at some point, I actually made the move to Spotify. So my my M- my MP3 library of CD rips is kind of in stasis and hasn't changed really for a long, long time. So yeah. it's all still there. And let's face it, there's a lot of Pink Floyd in it. <laughs> yeah, I think I guess that's it. You get to a uh, well, I think even in my I was in my twenties, I got to it. <laughs> and I, once yeah. I got to Pink Floyd and prog rock, I didn't really change that much. <laughs> the the word the word that you do which you're looking for is fossilized. Yeah, yes, it did. Yeah. <laughs> we, are, uh, we, we are fossils, I'm afraid. <laughs> yeah. If you look at my playlist from um, when I was messing with Vista in 2007, I don't think it's a substantially different to my Spotify <laughs> playlist. Um, from last year, apart from maybe you know Pink Floyd re-releases on there that where, where they got re-released versions of it. That's about yeah. it. Remastered you see, versions, as they always say. It, the, 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 there's always the, uh, yeah, having children, having kids, and things. That there's there's always a high risk that you might stumble stumble across your child's pl- pl- playlist, which I've done, which I've done once or twice, and gone, my God, what is this dreadful noise? And I'm told, well, it's it's what's the charts today, Dad. Like, oh crikey, is it? It sounds awful, and I sound like my father. Oh no! Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's not not too bad on my side because you know both my lads are into um, they're into a lot of classic music, you know, classic rock, especially Jack, the guitarist. So he's like he likes his ACDC and Pink Floyd and things like oh, that. So. Good taste, good taste. So I actually subscribe to his playlist. Oh really? Um, wow. He, he, yeah, he makes some good playlists. James has got a bit more eclectic taste and some modern stuff in there, so I definitely don't venture onto his playlist. <laughs> I think it's time Any, anything for... post 1987, 88, like that, I'm not really that bothered about. <laughs> I think it's time for a TDL published playlist. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Well, Jack's ones are pretty good if you like your classic rock. And, uh, you know, Clapton and uh, Led Zeppelin and stuff like that. He's got a lot of fun there. Excellent. Uh, 
I don't think we're sharing James's. Well, people probably like James that are younger than me or younger than us. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, with that reminiscent of uh, Vista and old playlists and uh, iPods, we will leave it, we'll leave it there for this week. Richard, where can we find you and you your can, Lego? You can find me and my Lego mainly on Twitter, uh, Richard underscore speed. Excellent. You can find me at Dixon on Twitter. And Gary is at Gary WMA. And he should be back with us next week. We should have more news to talk about. I may have bought a screen, we'll never know. Um, see whether you've got your Dell repaired. Yes, I think that happens there. Yeah. And um, yeah, we'll see how we. I might have a screen by next week. So <laughs> thanks very much for listening, and we'll see you next week. Cheerio.